Hi, and welcome to episode 20 of the Give Me a Crown Knitting, Spinning and Bits and Pieces podcast. Today is Monday the 21st of December 2015, and my name is Nina, also known as Give Me a Crown across the internet. I'm coming to you today from Sydney, Australia, where it's a warm and muggy day. We've gone from tornadoes last week through to bushfires this week. Um, so it's definitely feeling like Christmas. Um, I'd like to say hello to everyone who's decided to join me today. Uh, I'll be sharing some of my works in progress and I'll also share a little bit about how I got into spinning and I've also got an exciting new prize for the 2016 uh, yarn goals giveaway that is running in the Ravelry group at the moment so stick around for that. This week I haven't finished any objects but I did attempt a, a start on some woolly slippers. I had this brilliant idea that it'd be great to get one more gift done and I got about 10 rows in and I realised that was just a silly idea so that's been scrapped but I've made some progress on my sock yarn blanket. So I have done five squares, if I can figure out where they are. They're over here. So these five squares were all from minis that were sent to me by Sandra from the Craftfulness podcast. And if you want to know what these are, then just send me a message on Ravelry and I'll double check the details for you because I don't have them right here to hand. But this is the first one. It's really beautiful. I like the sort of yellowy, orangey, browny colours with the blue and the white. So it's definitely given me some inspiration for some dyeing in the future. The second one is a self striping yarn. Third one, I think this one she said was from a Norwegian yarn company that's also self striping. And that's a beautiful gradient yarn. And then this one was also a self striping. And I just ran out at the end, so I popped in a little bit from some yarn that was sent to me by Melinda from the Yarn Woman podcast. So I did some calculations and I've got 65 squares. <laughs> so it's definitely growing. Um, it's somewhat warm to work on now in the evenings when it sits on my lap. But I will keep going. I'll keep adding more squares to it now that I've got some more minis to add to it. I haven't yet decided if I'm intending to finish it in 2016, but I think I'll I'll make my decisions about my goals and I'll share them either next week or in the first episode of the new year. Probably the first episode of the new year. I've been getting some great ideas from some of the posts that have been going up in the 2016 Yarn Goals giveaway thread, so thank you to everyone who's been contributing already and um, I'm almost thinking about having a finish your blanket along or something like that so we'll see what happens. I have also made a little bit of progress on my craftfulness socks so they're in this beautiful project bag that was sent to me in a swap by Sandra from the craftfulness podcast so the same person who sent me those minis and I'm in a dangerous situation here, but uh, she sent me this yarn that she had dyed up. It's coming up a bit darker on screen than what it is in real life. But uh, I think last time that I showed you, I had completed down to where the marker is. I added a few more rows of stockinette and I've turned the heel. So it's a reinforced heel and I've, in, I've continued the reinforcing underneath the heel. Um, I just, I like the way that that feels underneath the heel so these are going to be socks for me. And I wanted to turn the heel just so that I've got some 
basic stockinette knitting for when I take the journey out to my mum's in the next few days. So they're coming up well and I expect that I'm going to have a fair bit of wonderfully relaxing knitting time uh, out in the Australian countryside so I'm looking forward to that. I have also been working on my Geisler cardigan so this is a paid pattern by Sylvie Similar and I've spoken about it I think once or twice now so it is hard to show but this is how it's looking at the moment so I've completed it's got a long collar which will be able to be folded down and then it's got the sleeves and I've just separated to start working on the body I think it'll look nice up here somewhere <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't really work, does it? Um, I haven't had any any issues with the pattern since I last showed it. It appears to be fitting exactly as I expected it to. I do now have to do some do some maths and thinking about the decreases and increases. I have a slightly oddly proportioned body, so I just want to make sure that it will fit comfortably and the pattern includes a decreasing on the sides so I just need to decide whether or not I want to do them on the sides or whether I shift them so in a few pullovers that I've done recently I do the decreases at <laughs> I can't do this backwards um, I've done the decreases at a quarter of the way in from each side at the front and then a third of the way in from the back. So I find that that gives a good fit but then they've been pullovers so I'm, I would assume that the same logic works for cardigans as well. But I'll do some thinking. I don't think I'm going to take this away with me for the break because I think it would be a little bit too much thinking and quite frankly I don't want to be trying it on when it's 30 degrees Celsius plus and I think just working on my socks and maybe on my sock yarn blanket will be perfectly fine for me. Uh, what else? I have had some acquisitions this week so I placed an order with Hannah from the Circus Tonic Handmade Etsy shop. She is a relatively new indie dyer here in Australia, um, just some suburbs away in Sydney. And I placed an order with her and she shipped very, very quickly. And I got these two beautiful skeins. So they might not come up um, quite correctly on screen, but one is a grey and one is a sort of a a pale, oops, pale greeny colour. I don't know if it'll come across, but I've taken photos of them on my Instagram account if you want to check them out. So this grey one is called House Crow and it's an 80% Australian Superwash Merino, 20% nylon, 374 metres in 100 grams. And this other one is the same base and it's called Western Whitbird and I'm thinking about using these for a pullover so combining them into stripes of some sort or colour blocks uh, I did the folded pullover uh, earlier this year I've worn it on the podcast before and I'm thinking about redoing that one in just two colours because I used three colours in it last time I think that this might not be quite enough yarn for it but I will be able to adjust the length of the sleeves or just sort of modify modify the um, the pattern a bit so that it, it works or else I could add in a, a different colour as well if I wanted to and considering uh, Hannah is very close 
uh, and it ships very quickly. If I have an emergency, then I'm sure I can order another yarn in this base. Um, and then, yeah, I might as well show you now. So we have a 2016 Yarn Goals giveaway going on in the Ravelry group. And last week I shared that one of the prizes will be a set of stitch markers and a progress keeper that um, was custom ordered from Chatton Designs and it has the Give Me a Crown logo colour sort of combination in it. But Hannah has also kindly given this gorgeous skein of yarn. So this one is called Spangled Drongo. And it's a a grey yarn with sort of a dark navy blue speckly bits in there. I'm not sure if they'll show up correctly on screen, but again, I've taken a photo in on my Instagram account, and also you can probably see it in in the um, Circus Tonic Handmade Etsy shop. So she kindly donated this as a prize. So this will be the grand prize for the 2016 Yarn Goals giveaway. So hop over to the Ravelry group. You need to be a member of the group to take part. Um, and it's going until, I think I said, the 10th of January. So you've got a bit of time to think about those yarn goals. Um, you should definitely check out Circus Tonic Handmade Yarns on Etsy. And she also has a Ravelry group, um, which is, you just search for Circus Tonic Handmade Yarns and also check out her Instagram which is Circus Tonic Handmade. So thank you very much for this amazing prize. It was very very tempting to immediately place another order with her when I saw these three skeins together. I think they're just beautiful. But some lucky person is going to win this prize. Um, what else? I was having a bit of a think about uh, my spinning. I haven't actually gotten onto the braid that I was showing a few weeks ago, but I was having a look around and I stumbled across this little basket that I made. It's a little crochet basket with handles. I made the yarn out of old t-shirts and then I crocheted it up into a little basket. So it's got a few random balls of yarn in it. So a few years ago when I was out visiting my mum around this time of year, I had been looking at Pinterest and seeing all these fantastic um, images of people drop spindling and I was watching videos and I definitely wanted to give it a try. So I gave us the challenge to make me a drop spindle and we made this monster. <laughs> so it's incredibly long. I don't know why we left it that long. Um, I obviously hadn't done enough reading up about the weights and various things and realistically I should actually chop it off. But it was just made out of a piece of dowel that we got at the hardware shop. There we got three pieces of a compressed cardboard for the whirl. I put in some a notch just to guide the yarn and then we put a little hook on the top and I think we've done some gluing or something to try to get get everything to stay in place. So this was my very first drop spindle and I had a lot of fun with it while I was out there and then when I got home. Uh, while I was out there we stopped into a patchwork and quilting shop in her town and we're asking about fibre and the woman happened to have some alpaca fleece that she was planning to give to the local primary school and so she just gave me a handful of it and I had to wash it but I got to play with it. So these are some of my first bits of hand spun with my spindle. Um, you can see the very random weight of it. But I had to clean this fibre, dry it, and 
and when I was cleaning it I I was doing it by hand and trying to take out all the vegetable matter and um, I think we ended up using a comb and all sorts of things and it was a lot of fun but I also got some small sort of pre-dyed fibre from the shop and spun up these so these were after I'd had a bit more practice they're a bit more consistent but looking at them now they're rather overspun and then this was another one that I'd spun up as a as a trial. It was a alpaca fiber that I'd ordered online from Etsy, and it was unwashed, combed, and spun in April 2014. So I've put myself a little note on the back, and um, that's how I sort of got into my spinning. And then late last year, I ordered myself this beautiful drop spindle. So this one I ordered from Luxury Overdose which I haven't actually checked if they've still got their store open but I would hope that they do because it's a beautiful drop spindle uh, from memory they're in Tasmania. So that's their business card and on the back they've included the information so this one's 42 grams from Tasmanian Oak and Blackwood Merbal, Merbu, something like that. Um, and I, I haven't spun enough with this because about a few weeks after I got it, I guess, I then ended up getting my spinning wheel. So I've been watching some uh, some of the podcasters talking about their drop spindles recently and it's actually got me interested in giving it another whirl um, and taking the time to just do small small bumps of fibre rather than tackling larger projects on my spinning wheel but I definitely love love this spindle it's a, it's a nice weight for me and it's spun up lovely yarn I don't have any here right now to show but I had fun with it and I just thought I'd show the three little juggling balls. I had some brilliant idea that I wanted to do some juggling at some point, and they're little crochet balls, they're not quite round, and I think they're filled with just some polyfiber. And um, they're not heavy enough, I don't think, for practicing juggling, so that's probably going to go on to my 2016 yarn goals is to create some slightly heavier ones. I've got some uh, plastic beads that are meant to be good for juggling balls. So I think juggling's a, a fun thing to try now and then. In an old workplace we had some juggling balls and it was always fun if you were getting stressed out just to just have a go at, at juggling. And with that, I will finish up. I hope that you have a peaceful time over the holidays, um, regardless of what you celebrate. Um, I hope that you get to laugh and share fun things and and have a good time, get to relax and do some knitting and crafting. Um, it is a tough time of year for some people, so if you do know of someone who's having a tough time, then I hope that you can reach out to them and, and give them a bit of cheer. Uh, I will try to do a podcast between Christmas and New Year's. I'll see how things go, and um, otherwise, it'll be in the in the new year. But I hope that you all look after yourselves, um, have some good food, and get some projects off your needles. And I'll see you soon. <laughs>